Thank you very much for coming out tonight. I'm Ed Sniffin with the Department of Transportation Highways Division, and I really appreciate you coming out to this meeting to talk about the Pahoa Roundabout. <clears throat> I apologize. We made 100 copies of this handout to hand out tonight, and I'm sure it ran out. If you go to community presentations, you can download it there. So I apologize that we didn't have enough for everybody here. <clears throat> we also have on the table um, a voluntary Title VI form. Anytime we, we do a, me a community meeting, our Federal Highways uh, requirements require that we put out this form. So if you'd like to fill out the form uh, for our Title VI needs, then please feel free to do so. Uh, you can get the forms here at this table up here. <clears throat> this is this is picking up data for Title VI uh, requirements for uh, for any areas that we do community presentations in. Wow. Title VI. It's environmental justice. Just getting data for different community areas. Yes. So thanks again for coming out tonight. The intent of this meeting was to give you an update on the status of the project, kind of where we are, the different phases that we're going to be going through on the project to complete it. Right now, we're, we're targeting to finish the project by end of May. Throughout the time from now to the end of May, we're going to be going through three different phases of the project that we have uh, on the presentation boards on the sides here and, um, and back there. <clears throat> we also wanted to share with you our um, traffic information that we're putting on the websites. On our, was it, was it, was it the website? The punatraffic.com website. Website was, of course, put together by the county with, um, in partnership with DOT uh, during the lava flow. We're repurposing it during this period to show the traffic patterns in the area during, uh, during construction. So anybody going out um, into that area can pre-plan. You can take a look at the, at the website to see what the traffic is like before you go out there. <clears throat> before you start this presentation, there's a, few, there's a comment that I'd like to make that I'm sure other people in this room share with me. When Lorraine sent out the announcement for this meeting, she did not include our two state representatives. She included our county council people. And for some of us, and by the way, one of those county council people is running against our elected state senator. And what it appears to a number of us is that Lorraine is using taxpayer dollars to support political activism. Sit down. And it is not appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. <clears throat> Here with us tonight, speaking of our, our state and county representatives, we have Senator Ruderman here up front. <clears throat> we have Council Member Ilagan. We have Council Man Member Poleka. <clears throat> these Council Member, these Representatives reached out to us. These representatives reached out to us to ensure that we come out to the community to talk about the roundabout itself. First of all, the, the status itself, then how to, how to use the roundabout as we're, as we're coming through. We set up stations tonight to talk about the phasing, the construction phasing that you set around about in these areas back here. <clears throat> in the back section there, we have a station to talk about the website itself. Up here, we're going to have a video to talk about the use of the roundabouts. This is a video that was done by Maui County that we've repurposed for tonight as well. <clears throat> That's the intent of the meeting, to make sure that we talk to everybody about this. <clears throat> when we open up here, after we talk story here, we're going to open it up to the different stations. We're going to ask people to go out to the different stations to talk to our staff to get their questions, comments, and concerns answered. Okay? So that's the purpose of the meeting tonight, so that we can get the one-on-one -on -one discussions on your questions, your comments, and your concerns. But then we Feel I can field a couple of questions, and we, let's get to the, the open sessions. Okay, I have a couple of questions with one follow-up. <laughs> given the fact, given the fact that the 130 is the state's most dangerous roadway with more fatalities and collisions. Do you really feel like the opening of this roundabout, do you think it will alleviate or exacerbate this problem? Absolutely alleviate. Absolutely. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Next question. Uh, now, had, was the feasibility study even done? Absolutely. There were discussions for over years 
about this in our KPAG. Over years, we've been discussing this with the community. Over years, over years, we were talking about this to ensure that we could talk about the roundabouts in the Gold Government Road area and the widening and improvements that we're going to do on Kalpaho Road. Yes. Or, and what is our current um, capacity and usage of 130? I'm not sure about that. No, no, I, I, I didn't come with the technical answers tonight. I came to make sure that we talked about the statuses in this area. The study itself had vetted those issues. I have a question. So now this is in concrete, literally. What if they widen the highway that we're stuck with this? The highway widening is planned not in this area. The, the environmental, environmental assessment that we had done, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, the, the environmental assessment that we had done didn't include a widening in this area. Eventually, it will have to be. I mean, they should, they should use the money to widen the highway down to Ainaloa to go in this, you know, traffic. Like, if they do widen the highway, all they have to do is make the roundabout into a two-lane roundabout, and that will take care of the traffic. I come from a community in Canada that has a lot of roundabouts. So, the reason I didn't answer that, because anytime we do an environmental assessment in an area, we cannot presuppose an answer, right? When we go through it, we're going to look at it. When we widen it, the, the solution has got to come out of the environmental assessment. Definitely, widening the roundabout and expanding it is definitely one option. When they do the highway widening. That's correct. At that time. I just wanted to say, I was raised in Hawaii, and this is new here. However, I have been to other places like New Zealand, Europe, um, uh, England, and it works really well. And All a right. lot of planning oh, is going to Excuse me, everyone. Um, hold on, everyone. If we can please quiet down. We have some people in the front talking. Please. I was reminded that the feasibility study for the roundabout area is available in the library, at the Pohol Library. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, can you tell us whether there's anything unusual about this roundabout? Because it seems kind of squirrely when we watch how it's being constructed. Is it going to be a regular round circle or is it kind of a funny shape? It's a round circle. It'll be a round, a round circle roundabout. It's a three-legged roundabout instead of a four. That's the only difference. So everybody will be going in the same direction and they'll be going slow. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, they paved and then re-torn up and then re-paved again. Like, why are they paving and then tearing up and then re-paving? It seems like that will be a way to use up the 4.8 million bucks. Well, what happened is um, with failure breakdown. So yesterday, yesterday, <clears throat> for, first of all, apologize for the traffic yesterday. Yesterday, when they were working at the Gore in that area, when they were excavating that por portion to make sure they could pave it, they finished up the excavation in that area by 2 o'clock. They put the paver down in that area. Once it was down, the, the paver blew a hose. When it blows a hydraulic hose, you cannot move it. So we had to get equipment in to pull that paver out. We also couldn't leave that 18-inch hole that we had dug open. So we had to make sure we filled it. When we filled it, we brought in a backhoe that brought in asphalt so we could put in that area and compact it temporarily. Because it not, couldn't be compacted by the paver or put in by the paver and compacted correctly, we put it in to ensure that everybody could roll over it safely. But then when we come back again, we have to take it out. We have to put it in correctly. Um, this light that's up here is a four-way intersection program that's there. Okay? <laughs> and what's happening is that it's anticipating a traffic going to, as you drive into Pahoa, turning to the right. If they reprogram that thing, when the Pahoa traffic leaves and goes into Hilo, the other traffic that could be going into Pahoa is stopped. And there's a backup. You'd relieve at least 30% of the traffic 
going through there, and I know this. I'm in the business, not here in Hawaii, but in Alaska, and we've got plenty of this stuff. I deal with traffic control all the time on projects that I build up there. That never should have happened. I was going to complain in November. Okay. That traffic <laughs> program needs to be changed. Secondly, the other thing that needs to be is as soon as those guys have that lane that's on the far side of the circle done, they could have put traffic through there. They might mess up their, con their, their, con their schedule a little bit, and it could have relieved pressure. So that's what we're talking about. That's what the next phase of the construction project is. That needs to be more, you know, if you're going to make people happy around here. You've got to make traffic full. So that's what the next phase is, to open up one portion. Police officers backed up in that line. They're not serving the public. So please, I'm not trying to be critical of you folks. Fix that program on that light, and you'll see a lot of PB happy, more people happy, and you'll get your services done a lot better. So that's just the delay issue that I have. Okay. Why don't they work at night? That's another one. Why don't they work at night? They work at night in quiet man, but they do not work at night. The question was, why don't we work at night? On the east side of the island, you all live in a big island, okay? It's dark at night, we have rainfall. When we pave at night, we cannot predict the weather at night, okay? Now, when we bring on hundreds of tons of asphalt and we're waiting and it rains on us, contractors has to throw all that tons away. That's a lot of money that is on stake here. On the west side, we can work at night because we can see the clear skies on the corner side, okay? So it's very difficult to pave at night. We did many, many years ago in Kiao Town. I don't know if some of you remember way back in front of Kiao, used to be Kiao Elementary, now Kiao Middle School. And we got rained on. And it's dangerous at night too. There's not enough highway lighting, but that's the reason why um, this project wasn't designated for night work. So what we're trying to do is balance, balance the impacts. What we ask the contractor to do is expedite the project by working more hours. So every day the contractor is working two more hours per day. They're also working eight hours on Saturday. They're trying to do as much as possible to expedite the completion of the project. Uh, I've done my project in Vietnam, you know, no problem. You know, there's 10,000 people on all kinds of vehicles and no one gets the rent. But I think what is happening here is people are really frustrated. We've been in traffic for five years. I go to Hilo to work. I have to leave sometimes at four in the morning you know, because I don't know what's going to happen, you know. Coming home yesterday, I was in traffic for a half an hour trying to get home. It affects doctor's appointments, a disabled husband that I have. I just think you're hearing a lot of frustration and not a lot of forward movement. So if some people here could feel like this is going to one day end so we can get from point A to point B. And the police officer is sitting in the line yesterday. I mean, it was just crazy yesterday. Really frustrating. Thank you. Another question that came up was uh, once that traffic was backed up all the way to Ainaloa, why was there not traffic control at that light? Forget the light and let them move the cars through faster and watch it. Why are there no police officers traffic control in all of that mess? Okay. Uh -huh. The question was why why weren't there traffic control at the lights when the traffic was backed up on 130? We did override what we're doing we went to one lane we let the lights flash we had flaggers override and we moved traffic 10 minutes intervals five we shifted we made a change because afternoon traffic was just coming on us we we're dead in a hole with the paver so we're stuck on construction site so we dumped traffic as fast as we could and as best as we could because if i do you half an hour coming in Kahakai and Poho Town is going to be outrageous, so we have to do as best as we can. I understand Route 130 is backed up far. HPD telling us, and we're doing our best. But to answer your question. Are you the guy who gets to decide that we can't use the shoulders except from 3 to 7.30 or something? Are you the guy who decides that? Who is it? <laughs> No. What? Shoulder lanes are by Federal Highways de definition. Well, by Federal Highways definition, they are by fe Federal Highways definition. 
Okay, next question. Next question. Next question. No, no, if you don't want to answer, but let's, let's ask somebody else. I don't want to hear about the feds. I want to hear about you. No, next question. Come on. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, yes. Just for the short term. Let me just explain a little bit about railroad. I've asked our public works about it. And what they told me is that railroad is actually a compacted gravel. You, the speed limit there is 20 miles per hour compared to the highway, which is paved 45 miles per hour. The other things is that. Okay, so the other things, let me, let me just explain what was told to me because I was definitely over at Public Works talking to Warren Lee to make sure that we might be able to use um, railroad as a detour and working it out with DOT, but there are a bit of a complication involved. And some of the complication is that railroad is also owned by multiple um, property owners. So we would have to renegotiate um, because the reason why that was constructed is due to the fact it was supposed to be used for the lava flow emergency. So we would have to change that and talk to the other property owners. The other part is also compromising the federal funds that we are getting, which is 75%. Hold on, Toby. Which is 75% of that project which we fully funded it as the county. If we were to compromise that funding, we would lose 75% of it. So I've brought this up many times. And if you could, Ed, maybe explain to them when the roundabout would finish. That way we have an end goal in mind. As, as Ed stated, by the end of May, the roundabout will be done. The, completion, the, the project will be completed. In these next several weeks, we're going to be looking at different phasing to push that through. In those different phasings, absolutely correct that the signal is not going to be able to handle the volumes that we're putting through that area. So we're going to be pushing everybody through on special duty, with special duty officers to ensure that we can, we can expedite the traffic to the area. To put it really quick, if there's an emergency, if there's an accident in there, are you guys starting negotiation? This is going to happen. Yeah. No, everybody that lives here many years we know this is going to happen. I know you guys know this is going to happen. Are you, is the negotiation starting to give us an emergency exit? Not just because of the lava, because we're tired of sitting in traffic. It took me one hour from Ainaloa to Long Strand. But when I got here, there was no officers there. The traffic was way back to Orchid Lad. So I don't know how long you had officers there, but they weren't there long enough. Did you guys start this? Are you planning to help us? get out of this emergency situations like a simple accident in the roundabout. Yeah. We're going to be shut down again. Yeah. Or hurricane or fall yeah. trees or PGB. In that area. Right now, we have no plans to open up railroad. We have no... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. They're looking at shower, at shower area? Yeah, shower time, and from the lowly to the shower, they're cutting through, going down the lowly, cutting through, and going up shower. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. No, I drive school bus. I'm in traffic for 20 seconds. They're going to, the second phase of that, sh that shoulder lane conversion is a light at the shower drive. And that light area is supposed to be, is the completion of that shoulder lane conversion project, right? So the project starts up next year. That's not soon enough. That's not soon enough. We've been in, stuck in traffic for two years while they gave us three and a half lanes of highway up by the dump. Didn't make an uh, exit for the dump. Didn't make an exit for shower. What the hell are you guys doing? We're living within our means. Down here, we pay taxes, and you guys aren't even I would love to give you all the relief that you want. I absolutely don't have the money for it. We went into the, to, to the legislature to get more money so we could do more projects like this. We're not, we don't have it. So I would love to expedite it for you. I just don't have the money for it. In December, 
when we had that three car mortality collision and for eight hours highway 130 was closed and my friend was driving me to the airport we thought it would be an hour drive we spent three hours in Hawaiian Acres. Nobody was even directing the traffic when Highway 130 got closed just to get us to chaos. It literally took three hours. It was unbelievable. And so whatever you can do to convey to the state authorities that people down here really feel like they've been neglected in terms of the larger traffic flow issues in the area, I think the roundabouts moving along faster than I've ever seen a Hawaii project move, and I'm really grateful to <laughs> Some kind of situation where, at least if we have a road shut down, we don't have people literally freaking out having mental health emergencies in the backwoods of Hawaii. That would really be great. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Um, Sorry. I've been on roundabouts. I grew up in New England. I'm a resident here now. And um, I just, I'm glad you're having a meeting like this to help people learn how to do it. But you're putting a roundabout in an area of Hawaii where they couldn't even merge at speed. <laughs> and the An entire population, a quarter, a third of the island. Who's who in this room has driven around the ball? <laughs> okay. It's not. It's not when it's a single lane roundabout. It's not difficult to learn. In a single lane roundabout. <laughs> Hello, hi, everybody. I'd like to address some of the things that I'm sorry. You said if it was your mother or your auntie having a heart attack on Kahakai and trying to get to the Hilo Hospital through a blocked up roundabout, and it was taking the ambulance two hours, like the police car is stuck in traffic. What is your plan to expedite that emergency? I never said we don't have an operational plan. I said we have no plans to open railroad. That is the, that is, that's what I said. When there's an emergency in that area, there's, there's, plan, there's, there's always ways to, to, to stop the traffic or circumvent the roundabout itself, to pull emergency vehicles through. The travel lane is 18 feet wide, and we also have a 12-foot lane that's uh, used by, by the trucks. So totally, you have 30-foot lane that's uh, traversable to a roundabout. So if somebody gets an accident in the roundabout, they can pull on the side traffic. Emergency vehicles can still go through. I hope that one day either the Department of, Ed of Transportation or the County Roads Division will construct that road. Right now there's $15 million in the budget that our representative and myself got last year to do that. We have to convince the Department of Transportation that we need that secondary route out of Pune. Yes, we do. But so, so what I want to talk about right now is they're here to talk about the roundabout. Not everything, that, that, not all the problems that we have. And what I want to say about that is I think a lot of us know that the roundabout isn't where it maybe should have gone. And the roundabout maybe isn't the perfect solution for this intersection. But we are getting an improvement to the deadliest intersection in the state. We had at least five fatalities. I know of at least 20 accidents at that intersection. And, and we are finally getting an improvement to it. And I do believe that after it's been opened, it's going to be fun to watch the first day or two, but after it's, <laughs> after it's been open for a couple of weeks, it's all going to seem like it was always there. It's not going to be hard to navigate, and it does pose some advantages for emergency situations. For example, when the power goes out, which it always does in an emergency, the roundabout will still function where a traffic light might not, and it will be safer and move traffic through the intersection. So we are 
getting a, a major improvement to the most deadly intersection in our state. We have to put that in perspective that this is a good thing. And while I don't think that the Department of Transportation is here to answer all of our questions, I think they're aware of our frustration, perhaps not enough so, but they're aware of it, but they're here tonight to talk about the roundabout that's gonna open in a few weeks. And I hope we can all recognize that it will be the roundabout in and of itself will be an improvement to our traffic situation. It does not take away our desperate need for a second route out of Pune. Because when that accident happened on the highway, no one could get through, no matter what kind of emergency. There was no alternate route. There was no traffic control. There was no way out of Pune for us 30,000 people. So we need to convince them that we need a second route out of Pune. But tonight, they're here to address questions about the roundabout. And I hope that we appreciate the fact that they fixed the worst intersection in our state, which we've lived with for a long time. I'm going to just take a couple more questions and we're going to open it up to the different sections. The sessions out here. I'm going to choose a couple of people who haven't asked any questions yet, if you don't mind. I, so I wasn't here when this first started, so I just want to somebody can pull out a diagram and show me how There's a bunch over here on the side. Yes. We'll, after we finish up this portion here, we're going to break out into different areas to start talking about the project itself. Why don't they take strike by long? When? That's dangerous. So, um, how does this size compare? to the uh, small roundabout on Maui in Kihei. What is the dimension? Sal just said, is that you Sal? You just said a uh, 30 foot diameter. Is What is Maui's? What is the diameter? What is the roundabout diameter? It's 135 foot diameter. I don't know. You don't know. Well, you're going to show it like it's one, and I can tell you that I've driven Maui's a lot, and it's very small, and it's approached at 15 miles an hour, and it's in a rather residential area, which this is not. So I hope that's not your exemplary roundabout. Last question. Okay, when the roundabout is finished, is this temporary traffic light by poor auto parts going to be gone? And is anything going to take its place? And if so, what? Please. I think in phase uh, B of our um, opening of the roundabout, that traffic signal will be taken down. Uh, in the future, I believe Bryson Cinder may be putting a permanent signal there as part of their development. The, the Bryson Cinder property. Okay, we're going to open up to the different stations now. We're going to have our staff at the different boards on these areas here. We have staff in the back to talk about the the website that shows the traffic cams on it and we'll have the video up here you can feel free to watch whichever one you want and um, interact with our staff I'll still be here so you guys can yell at me a little bit more if you want to on the side okay